familiar with Saint Nick, his reindeer, and the elves, but over the centuries, countries, and cultures, there's a lot more Christmas lore than just that. The popularized version of Christmas is the American one, mostly, because of their powerful media influence. Uh, but all over Europe, there are other more obscure beliefs and traditions that are often forgotten. I find these to be super interesting, and it's a shame that some of them aren't better known, at least in this part of the world. If you take anything away from this video, I hope that it's the Icelandic Yule Lads. Their name alone is wonderful. Don't tell me you wouldn't want to hang out with the Yule Lads based only on the knowledge that they are called the Yule Lads. There are 13 of them, and they each appear on their own of 13 days leading up to Christmas, and each of them is named after the mildly belligerent task that they set out to comically bully the population with. The first of them is called Sheep Coat Claude. He will sneak into sheep pins and suckle the milk from the ewes, you being a female sheep. Uh, he's the first one arriving on the 12th. On the 13th, Gully Gawk arrives, and he steals the foam from buckets of cow's milk, um, which I take it that means, like, he takes, basically he takes the the cream, like the good bit where like the fat settles out. I think that's how that works. Uh, the next one, appearing on the 14th, is called Stubby. He is short and stubby, and he steals food from frying pans. The next one is called Spoon Licker, and he licks spoons. Imagine that. Uh, the next one, Pot Scraper, or Pot Licker. He will steal unwashed pots and lick them clean. And the next one is Bowl Licker, who steals bowls of food from under the bed and licks them clean. The next one is Door Slammer. He keeps everyone up at night by stomping around and slamming doors. Skur Gobbler eats up all of the Icelandic yogurt, which I guess is called Skur. Uh, sausage Swiper loves stolen sausages. Uh, I really like this guy. Um, uh, the next is Window Peeper. He will creep outside windows and sometimes steal whatever he sees inside that catches his eye. The next is Door Sniffer, who has a huge nose and an insatiable appetite for stolen baked goods. The next one is called Meat Hook, by far the most menacing of all of them. Uh, he snatches up any meat left out, particularly smoked lamb. And the last, appearing on Christmas, is Candle Beggar, who will steal candles, which were fairly, you know, expensive in Old Iceland. It's not that easy to make a candle. It's interesting that in recent years, um, there has been sort of invented this character, Mrs. Claus, uh, because people just sort of thought, well, of course, Santa should have a wife, he should have a... It feels, it feels right that Santa should have a female counterpart. And if you look further back and you look uh, in Europe, there are all sorts of female figures that accompanied Santa Claus throughout history. Um, so Santa Claus very much used to have a, like a female partner and not just a, and not not a partner as in a wife but someone who delivered the presents with him um, one of these is saint lucia or saint lucy um, she is known as a saint just as saint nicholas but just like him she has overtly pagan symbolism uh, she's nearly certain to be pre-christian in origin her holiday is on the 13th of December, but what was but it was originally meant to be held on the winter solstice. Her symbolism is that of light. She wears a wreath of candles on her head and is associated with the rebirth of the sun.
In some depictions, she holds a sheath of grain, which connects her to agriculture, and this hints that she may be connected to the Germanic goddess Freya, who is also associated with the sun, fertility, and the summer. Likely the greatest hint that she is pagan of origin and later assimilated with a saint, in Scandinavia, she is accompanied by elves known as Stjerngozer, Starboys, or Tomtanisser, with Tomta and Nisser both meaning elf. So it's curious that she has elves along with Santa Claus. Uh, Saint Lucia is found scattered throughout Europe from Scandinavia to the Mediterranean, indicating that her believers were once widespread. So it wouldn't surprise me if she fulfilled the role of a fertility goddess such as Freya, something that would be universally important to agrarian societies. In southern Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, there is another such fi female figure called Christkind, meaning Christ child. The name is somewhat confusing, given that she is a grown woman, and not a child, uh, much less the child of Jesus. But she also exists in Italy and Poland, and her name is something to the effect of Little Jesus, or God Child. So I guess the Kint child ending is just meant to imply that she's um, a step down from Christ. She's angelic, heavenly, she's Little Jesus. Um, but I guess that just doesn't but Christ Kint exactly doesn't translate that easily into English. Um, she is said to deliver to deliver gifts with uh, Santa on Christmas Eve night, which is an honor we haven't given to Mrs. Claus. There is another one called Snyagorochka, which I insist on pronouncing like that because it just sounds a lot better than Snagorochka. Uh, Snyagorochka is the snow maiden who can be found in Russia and Slavic Europe. She is thought to have originated with a Slavic goddess similar to the way Saint Lucia is connected to Freya or perhaps Hala. Some sources say she is the granddaughter of the Russian Dead Moros, which is the Russian version of Santa Claus. Interestingly enough, uh, Dead Moros was in old Russian folklore, said to be a wizard. And then when I'm reminded that Santa is magic, it kind of makes a lot of sense that perhaps he was originally thought of as a wizard. Snyagorochka is a helper of Dead Moros, similar to Christkind. Snyagorochka manages to be a really cool and likable figure. If you look at any of her art or depictions, it's just really beautiful to look at. Um, I did, at some point, wonder if the Disney movie Frozen was based on Snyagorochka, because it, it really does look similar. But I looked into it, and that movie is actually based on the works of Hans Christian Andersen, who was Danish and wrote fiction, though his works were largely based on folklore, so it's hard to say if there's a connection between his uh, Snow Queen story that he wrote in Danish and this Snyagorochka character. This is an old Russian animation called Snyagorochka about this figure that I found. Uh, I just thought it was really super cool, although there are no subtitles like there's no english subtitles so unless you speak russian you don't have any idea what's going on but i just thought it was really cool uh to see this uh 
in this sort of old Disney style. So I thought I'd share it with you, and you can find it in the description, as I said. So as you can see, uh, between St. Lucia, Christkind, and Snyagorochka, and I'm sure there are others, there are plenty examples of Santa Claus being accompanied by a female counterpart. This is quite interesting because Odin, the god that Santa probably was originally, um, a lot of people tend to think this, that Odin is Santa Claus, and Hala, uh, who is Odin's female counterpart, uh, accompanied him in the Wild Hunt, and Santa's sleigh ride is thought to be based on the Wild Hunt. The Wild Hunt was basically just uh, the Germanic gods would, um, you know, fly through the sky and, uh, you know, they, they would just fly through the sky uh, all around the world, the, uh, the, the, the old Germanic gods. And, um, like, Santa's sleigh ride, like, um, the eight reindeer, the reason why there's eight reindeer is because, um, uh, Odin's horse, I forget his name, Sleipnir? Uh, but, um, I'll put it on the screen if I remember, um, had eight legs. So the reason why there's eight reindeer is because it's the eight legs of Sleipnir. Um, so given the connection of the Wild Hunt and Santa's sleigh and Odin and Hala, it's very likely that these aforementioned female characters are all archetypes of Hala. Um... Unlike with um, uh, Santa Claus, Holland, Hala very often leaded the hunt over Odin, whereas these female characters they only ever they only ever accompany, but Hala sometimes even led the charge herself. So it looks like the further you go back, the more important the this female Christmas character archetype seems to be. Uh, there's a Grimm story called Frau Halla, or Lady Halla, where a girl falls through a well and ends up in this sort of forest place where this older woman, Frau Halla, is living. And she ends up doing chores for her so that she can live there and not with her abusive stepmother. Some other stuff happens. Um, but if ever she fluffed up if ever anyone fluffed up the, the pillows in uh, Frau Hala's home, the stuffing would fly out and uh, snow would be created on Earth. So it's like this magic snow woman that's so, uh, sort of connected. Um, and her name in various Germanic languages means things like faithful, friendly, and fair. Um, Hala and its related terms, um, though there are plenty of other names for her that came about uh, later on, like more recently, that paint her as a witch as the church tried to demonize her. They, they do that a lot, if you haven't noticed. Um, Frau Hala is sometimes depicted as a beautiful woman in white, and at other times, a hideous monster. Another name for Hala is Pershta. But if you look up Pershta, um, you get pictures of, like, horned demon creatures. Because uh, that, for whatever reason, that name for her, Pershta, I don't know what it means, but it's more, it's more associated with this Hala character being transformed into a demon. Um, this is a pretty perfect time to mention Krampus, since these Perkta monsters are very similar. Uh, Krampus is said to be a demon that punishes bad children at Krampusnacht, which is on December 6th, uh, as an opposite of Santa Claus. Perhaps you've heard of him, maybe you saw the movie, but uh, what's curious about Krampus is that there are all sorts of super ancient festivals 
where Krampus is honored and celebrated. So it's like, why, why are you celebrating a demon? Why would you celebrate a demon? And there is a Celtic horned god uh, who was called uh, Kernanos. Uh, I don't actually know what that word is from. That might be Gaulish. I don't think he was called Kernanos in Ireland, or I don't even know if he existed in Ireland. Um, but anyway, uh, he was known as Kernunos. That's what he's most commonly called as. Uh, he was a... Uh, like a beast man of the forest. Um, he was a man, but he had, like, fur and, like, horns uh, because it was like he was supposed to symbolize deer, the hunt, and man's connection to nature. He was a good thing. He was a good god. He was, like, the wild man of the forest. Um, so, but of course, if you have, a like, a horned figure... Um, it kind of looks like, like the devil. Um, so he was, so if, if you have a demon, you have this demon that people celebrate and the church literally demonized, um, and there's a similar pagan god. Um, so it really makes you think that Krampus was originally a pagan deity that was transformed into some bad demon. There's no proof that Krampus is of pagan origin, and there are no pre-Christian records of him, but I think the church seldom invented demons from thin air. I mean, why would you, why would you come up with a demon, the antithesis of, of God, um, for people to celebrate. So it's far more likely that Krampus was a pre-existing figure who wasn't always native, uh, sorry, who wasn't always a negative thing who got changed with time. Uh, furthermore, the birch branches that he carries have association with witchcraft, uh, which, as, I, as I've discussed in other videos, Witchcraft wasn't always seen as a, a bad thing, but was sort of, with along with Christianity, its perception was shifted to be something, something equivalent to devil worship, um, and witchcraft was overtly pagan in every case. So, it would make a lot of sense if Krampus wasn't originally something hostile and evil, and it became that. It may come as a surprise that witches were not only associated with Halloween, but have also historically had their place in Yuletide lore as well. Grula was an Icelandic witch who would descend from her mountain with the Yule lads to attack the village below. In Italy, there actually is no Santa Claus, and La Befana, the Christmas witch, alone delivers the presents. This one blew my mind a bit, that in Italy they have the Christmas witch. Like, that's just so weird that they don't even have Santa, they just have the Christmas witch. It, you know, it's like, it sounds, it sounds made up. So as you can see, there's a lot more to Christmas than what you may have grown up with. It's really super interesting to see all of these different beliefs and traditions that exist all over Europe. Christmas can be a lot more different around the world than I thought, and it's very interesting to learn about a holiday that we're all familiar with but would never have heard of some of these more obscure figures. And with that, thank you so much for watching, and if I don't have another Christmas related video up before Christmas, which I kind of intend to. If I don't, have a very Merry Christmas and a very good Yule.